हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर पी एन कोथरू फ्रॉम जम्मू टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल एंटाइटल्ड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एक्स रे डिफ्रैक्शन इन द स्टडी ऑफ क्रिस्टल डिफेक्ट्स पार्ट टू अंडर पेपर क्रिस्टोग्राफी एंड क्रिस्टल ग्रोथ सो स्टूडेंट्स let us see what we are going to learn in this module we are going to learn about application of x ray diffraction in the study of crystal defects assessment of crystal defects burke barrett also known as new kirk and long techniques examples of x ray diffraction topography and diffraction curves assessment of crystal defects the experimental techniques of x ray diffraction for assessment of crystal defects can be explained as follows as explained above x ray diffraction has the potential of of being an exploratory technique for the assessment of various types of defects in crystals it is penetration through the matter makes it a bulk method as it can lead to investigations into the observation and characterization of defects within the body of the crystal there are a number of experimental arrangements for recording x ray topographs we may describe here two types of experimental techniques that are widely used these two techniques are burke barrett technique also known as new kirk technique second one is lang technique these two techniques may be described in the sections that follow burke barrett new kirk technique will be taken up first In 1931 Berg gave an idea about a method wherein x-ray could be used as probes for the study of imperfections in crystals Barrett further developed the method in 1945 x-ray topography requires point to point correlation between the x-ray intensity in the topograph and the crystalline perfection in the crystal it means that any single spot in the crystal should be imaged as such in the topograph that is what is actually meant by one to one correlation between what exists in the crystal and what gets imaged and registered in the topograph to enable this happen certain experimental conditions are required to be met let us describe those conditions which will have to be realized in order to obtain one to one correspondence between what exists in the imperfect region and what is detected in terms of contrast of the topograph figure 10.1 is a schematic diagram showing the formation of image from point o of the crystal on photographic film at p this figure shows x ray source of finite size and diffraction of x rays is taking place from a point o on the crystal specimen in order that the bragg condition for diffraction is satisfied the angle between the incident x ray and the normal o n at o should be 90 minus theta b where theta b is the bragg angle all the x rays that are incident and lie within the cone having its axis o n and semi apex angle 90 minus theta b will satisfy bragg's law let us consider that the source x s is at a distance capital l from the crystal and that the diffracted beam from o is registered on a photographic film 
P which is placed at a distance x from the crystal. Xs being a source of finite size and cone intersects source along a curve x i1, x i2, x i3 on the photographic plate P. The curve x s1, x s2, x s3 is recorded as image which appears as x i1, x i2, x i3 on P. The angle between x s1 o and x s3 o is equal to the angle between x i1 o and x i3 o. Therefore, x i1, x i3 by x is equal to x s i, x s3 upon l. x i1 and x i3 could be treated as almost straight lines. Same treatment applies to x s1 and x s3. Therefore, one may say that delta x1 is equal to x s into x by capital L, where delta x i is equal to x i 1, x i 3 and delta x s is equal to x s 1, x s 3. Delta x i should be as small as possible and for that the source size delta x s should be as small as possible and the distance x from the crystal specimen to the photographic film should be as small as possible and the distance l from the source to the crystal specimen should be as large as possible. It is not possible to meet all these requirements for this experiment. For example, it is not possible to reduce delta x s or x to zero or to make capital as large as infinity. However, what best can be done is to make compromise with these requirements and meet these conditions as best as one can and as practically feasible. This point is kept in mind while designing the X-ray topography setup. Use is made of X-ray source of as small size as possible while maintaining the brilliance of the source height. The brilliance is defined as X-ray output per unit area which is required to be kept as high as possible. Figure 10.2 is an experimental arrangement of Burke-Barrett technique in which Bragg diffraction in symmetric geometry is shown. The experimental arrangement used in Burke-Barrett technique is schematically shown in figure 10.2. S is an X-ray source. The crystal to be examined is placed at a distance of about 30 centimeters from the X-ray source S. The photographic film is positioned very close to the crystal specimen. When the diffracting planes of the crystal are parallel to the crystal surface, it is known as symmetrical Bragg diffraction and in this condition the distance between the crystal specimen and the photographic plate is extremely small maybe hardly a millimeter or so. The source of x-rays is a sealed focus tube and is hardly of the dimensions 1 mm by 1 mm. Because of the closeness between the specimen and the photographic film only a few millimeter square area of the crystal specimen can be scanned. The technique is used in Bragg geometry for observation of the crystal surface. However, this technique is not useful in the detection of defects within the volume of the crystal. Figure 10.3 is an experimental setup of Burke-Barrett method using asymmetrical Bragg reflections. The diffracting planes are not parallel to the surface of the crystal. Burke-Barrett technique can be used for covering greater areas 
by using asymmetrical bra condition this happens when the lat planes are not parallel to the surface as shown in figure 10.3 in this experiment diffraction is allowed to happen by lat planes which are not parallel to the surface when these lat planes are aligned such as to satisfy the bra condition the incident x ray beam is set at small angle with the crystal surface but the diffracted x ray beam are at large angle with it the equipment used in this experiment is simple and is widely used for rapid assessment of perfection of single crystals however it has certain limitations too which were overcome by improving the experimental technique by lang the technique introduced by lang is described in the section that follows lang technique of x-ray topography figure 10.4 is a schematic diagram of an experimental setup popularly known by the inventor's name as lang technique it uses a micro focus x-ray source to produce x-ray beam for probing perfection of a given crystal the x-ray beam from this source is collimated by a 50 cm long collimator the emerging x-ray beam from the collimator has a divergence of nearly 40 degrees in the horizontal plane in order to set the crystal specimen in the correct position there is a provision for the required orientation of lat planes the crystal can be suitably rotated around two axes one of the axes is in the vertical direction and the other is in the horizontal direction the turn table enables rotation of the specimen about the vertical axis the vertical circle goniometer enables rotation around a horizontal axis so by appropriate positioning and orienting the specimen one can achieve setting of the lat planes for bragg diffraction to receive the x rays as diffracted by the lat planes of the crystal specimen at an angle 2 theta b with respect to the direct beam the x-ray detector is set as shown in the figure the area irradiated by the x-rays sends out a diffracted beam which gets recorded as a thin line in order to record the diffracted x-rays from the whole volume of the crystal specimen the same that is the crystal specimen is traversed across the x-ray beam in order to ensure that the diffracted x-rays are properly recorded the photographic film is rigidly coupled to the crystal specimen it enables it to move with the specimen while new regions of the crystal specimen and the photographic film are presented for each setting a slit is provided between the photographic film or the plate and the crystal specimen so that the direct x-ray beam does not fall on the photographic film or the plate the positioning of the slit is adjusted in a way that it permits the diffracted x-ray beam to pass through but stop the direct x-ray beam this technique allows scanning of the whole volume of the crystal specimen and so has the potential of exposing defects or the imperfections in the entire volume of the crystal the whole volume topographs recorded by this technique are called projection topographs in this technique it is desirable that a diffraction curve is first obtained the diffraction curve is also known as a rocking curve in this curve intensity of the diffracted x-ray beam say i is plotted against angle of orientation 
of the crystal specimen, say theta, around the Bragg angle theta B setting, keeping the slit of the X-ray detector suitably wide. The shape of the rocking curve or diffraction curve is indicative of the overall perfection of the crystal specimen. Single crystals which are perfect give well resolved peaks due to wavelength components of the characteristic radiation. However, if the curve of a crystal specimen shows several peaks separated by a few minutes of arc from each other, it can be attributed to be as a result of low angle grain boundaries. Advances have been made in recent years to improve the efficiency and sensitivity of X-ray topographic and experimental techniques. Using high brilliance and a high power source, the exposure time is greatly reduced. X-ray generators of the rotating anode type have been used with great success. This type of generator with electrical power of 30 kilowatt is available. Synchrotron radiations at a wavelength of one angstrom have the potential for a great future in the field of X-ray diffraction topography. This radiation is highly collimated with divergence of around 10 raised to power minus 4 radians and is able to irradiate large areas of the crystal specimen at a time. Use of synchrotron radiation has several advantages which may be summarily put as under. It is well collimated beam. Second, it offers broad spectrum of wavelengths in the synchrotron radiation which enables one to record re several reflections at a time as in Lawey experiment. All reflections can be recorded in just few seconds. The third one, the photographic film or the plate need not be placed very close to the crystal specimen. It is a criterion for good resolution in ordinary Lawey technique to keep the two photographic film and crystal specimen very close. In the case of synchrotron radiation, photographic film may be placed at a distance of 10 cm from the crystal specimen without affecting, affecting the resolution. Now we take up example of topographs and diffraction curve. X-ray topography is applied in transmission or reflection geometry in order to make assessment of perfection and investigate diffraction crystals. Generally, diffraction curve or a rocking curve is also recorded before taking topographs. X-ray topography is a preferred technique for studying the crystal defects in bulk. The advantages of this method are that it is relatively simple to adjust, its resolution can be good, it does not require very expensive equipment and exposure times are short. What makes the technique more interesting is the fact that the distribution of defects in a section of large crystal can be investigated without having to cut the crystal. The resolved defects generally observed by topography are extended defects like dislocations, inclusions or precipitates, surface defects, long range strains, growth striations, etc. Describe here a few examples and we would reveal the potential of X-ray diffraction topography in characterizing 
the crystal defects and also in studying sources that may generate defects in otherwise perfect crystals. The topographs are recorded by a line camera using a collimated X-ray beam with the horizontal diversions of about 3 minutes of arc. The geometrical resolution of the apparatus having been estimated to about 0.3 micrometer. The topographs were recorded in a reflection that is RXRT and transmission that is TXRT scanning geometry. In certain cases, the AGK alpha radiation was employed after having thinned down the samples to about 150 micrometers. In the other cases, CUK alpha X-ray wavelength was used as the probe of investigation. Figure 10.5 is a topograph of strontium hexafluoride, whose chemical composition is SRFE 19 taken in reflection, scanning RX RT scanning geometry with 0.0.18 reflection. The crystal was grown using fluxed melt technique. Sample is nearly perfect but for some small white contrast areas and some cleavage like patterns seen in the upper right hand region which may be due to presence of some absorbing particles on the sample surface. Figure 10.6 is a topograph of another crystal taken in transmission TXRT scanning geometry using 300 reflection. The topograph shows precipitate like defects inside the crystal which could be flux inclusions. No growth bands are revealed. Figure 10.7 is a topograph taken in RXRT geometry using 0.0.18 reflection which reveals that the sample is a reasonably good single crystal, practically defect free within 70% of its area. One observes fringes in the bottom part which probably are stress related features. The white contrast area could be due to some misoriented grains which most probably could be flux particles or due to some surface damage. Figure 10.8 is RXRT scan topograph employing 0.0.18 reflection. One finds growth bands, a few dislocations on the basal plane and a large misoriented region corresponding to a grain emerging from a sample surface. The large misoriented grain attached with the main crystal indicates a coalescence phenomenon due to crystals getting nucleated at sites near to each other during flux growth. In order to illustrate the potential of X-ray diffraction for characterization of crystal defects and assessment of perfection of a given crystal, we may take up an example of a recording diffraction curve of a crystal of strontium hexafluoride whose chemical composition is SRFE 19 grown by fluxed melt technique. In this experiment, direct comparison of the diffraction patterns of irradiated, unirradiated crystal within brackets the same sample was made. First, the X-ray diffraction pattern of a crystal specimen was recorded by using high resolution X-ray diffractometer facility available at the National Physical Laboratory, New Delhi. The X-ray diffraction curve of strontium hexafluoride crystal with 008 diffraction planes is shown in figure 10.9. Figure 10.9 shows X-ray diffraction curve of strontium hexafluoride crystal showing sharp and smooth peak suggestive of good quality crystal. It shows sharp and smooth peak with half width 5 arc second which is suggestive of good quality crystal. The crystal may be declared as nearly perfect. The same crystal was irradiated at room temperature with 50 MeV Li3 plus ion beam delivered by 15 UD peritron accelerator. 
a facility which is available at Nuclear Science Centre New Delhi at a fluence of 1 cross 10 raised to 14 ions per square centimeter and its diffraction curve was recorded as is shown in figure 10.10. .10. It is interesting to find sharp decline in the diffracted X-ray intensity and smoothening of the curve disappears. Diffused peaks also appear. The curve has developed kinks at intervals. The variation in the shape of the diffracted curve suggests a possibility of low angle grain boundaries in the irradiated crystal of strontium hexafluoride. Half width increases from 5.6 arc second in the case of pristine that is unirradiated to 31 arc second in the case of irradiated crystal. The result suggests presence of point clusters of defects causing amorphization in the crystal on irradiation. Figure 10.10 .10 shows the diffraction curve of irradiated strontium hexafluoride crystal showing kinks and half width of 31 arc second suggestive of creation of defects on irradiation. The direct comparison of diffraction curves of unirradiated that is pristine and irradiated crystal is best done by figure 10.11. The diffraction curves gets almost flattened on irradiation. Disappearance of smoothness in the irradiated crystal implies that a stress oblique strain is generated in the hexafluoride crystal by swift heavy ion irradiation. This experiment not only offers an example of effectiveness of X-ray diffraction in delineating imperfections in crystals, but also its role as a powerful tool to study radiation damage in crystalline solids. There are several problems on assessment, characterization and defects related investigations which can be undertaken by employing X-ray diffraction topography and rocking curve as a powerful technique. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. We have learned about the experimental techniques of X-ray diffraction, the assessment of defects in crystals which have been described and discussed. The techniques of Burke Barrett are also known as Newkirk is in symmetric and asymmetric Bragg reflection have been described and explained. Lang technique of X-ray topography is also discussed. Examples of topographs and diffraction curves which reveal defect, defects of some crystals are given and explained with full description.